Hey everyone, I'm Victor Fong. I'm a financial consultant by profession. I'm also a father of two kids. These are my kids, Timothy and Isabel. The reason why I got them here is because today is the final reading of this chapter from this book, 52 Things Kids Need from a Dad by Jay Palladner. As you know, if you have been watching all the rest of my previous video, this book was passed to me by my son at the start of the circuit breaker measures here in Singapore. I'm working from home and he's studying from home. So I think he wants me to build a stronger relationship with me. I have been reading this book one chapter a day, recording them in one video each chapter. So I uploaded them on YouTube and so that I can revisit those chapters and learn and apply those learnings to be a better father for my kids. So I invite them here because the last few chapter is chapter 52. For the rest of chapter 1 to 51, if you like to view them, you can actually subscribe to my YouTube channel, click on the bell icon and you will receive a notification whenever I have another new video series reading. Okay, so uh, let me read you from chapter 52. It says, kids need their dad to not confuse heritage with legacy. For most of human history, a father's choice, career choice, was passed on from one generation to the next. Why do you think last names like Carpenter, Hunter, Cooper, and Smith are so common? If a father showed Mano, a young lad didn't have much choice. He received their calling as a heritage and would surely pass it on as his legacy. In a nutshell, it's the blessing and curse of being part of a family. Uh, these days, more than ever, heritage and legacy go far beyond what a person does for a living. You may or may not pass your plumbing business on to your son, or a passion for teaching on to your daughter, but the more crucial parts of your legacy actually run deeper than vocation. Integrity begets integrity. Abuse begets abuse. Bigotry begets bigotry. Knowledge seekers beget knowledge seekers. A creative spark cre begets a creative spark, and etc. Certainly, there are exceptions. You can choose to say, this character flaw stops with me. Just being aware of the concept of heritage and legacy will help you pass on the best and lay aside the rest. Most of us have plenty of poisonous traits we don't want to pass on to the next generation. 17th century English philosopher John Locke said, Hi. Hello. Hi. Uh, to me, I'm reading. <laughs> yeah, John Locke said, Parents wonder why the streams are bitter when they themselves have poisoned the fountain. So what heritage do you receive from your father? You may have enjoyed great quantity and quality time with your dad, who challenged you, loved you, disciplined you, and laughed with you. Somebody erased our face. Uh oh Or you may have barely known him. In another case, or somewhere in between, you need to come to grips with that relationship. Express thankfulness for all his efforts on your behalf. If possible, continue to invest in his life. If necessary, work towards forgiveness, let go of resentment. Understand that your father and mother come into their parenting responsibilities with a heritage from their parents. Recognize the generation chain. with resolve to make the next link stronger and tighter. If it has not been yet made clear in the past 51 chapters, the most important legacy you can leave is unconditional love. It doesn't matter how much love was poured into you. God has given you an endless supply and the more you give, the more you get. When a kid brings home straight A's, love them. When a kid spills his milk, love them. When a teenager wrecks a car, scores a touchdown, ignores curfew, gets elected prom queen, mouths the grass without being asked, or comes home pregnant, love them. Maintain high expectations, enforce family rules, provide consequences, hold them accountable, and dare to discipline. Love them through it. Break to your friends, pass, post their report card on the fridge, keep a script book of their athletic achievements, buy them ice cream, or make sure they know you love them for who they are and not what they do. The good news is that our kids give us fresh chance to leave the world a better place. Humanity's universal quest for immortality is personified in our children. Most of us will never create any museum quality art or be inducted into any halls of fame. We can hope, have hope in eternal life, but heaven is reality beyond this world. Your children are the most tangible connection to the future on earth. They are your greatest gift to tomorrow, Dad. The past, present, and future come together right here, right now. Don't miss the power of this turning point in time. Your heritage has been defined by others. It has limits and liabilities, but our legacy remains undefined. 
It has no limits. It only has potential. Key takeaway for this last chapter. Daddy, it's not about you. It's not about me either. You can't give your kids everything they need anyway. It's about being there, doing the best we can, loving them with all our heart, and then surrendering their lives back to the Creator. Malachi chapter 4 verse 6 says, He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and the hearts of the children to their father. And with that, we celebrate the end of chapter 52. Right? There is no more chapter 53 to read you. Feel free to go back to my previous videos from chapter 1 to 51. Continue to relearn, learn and relearn, just like what I'll be doing. And I hope to see you if I have a new book that I'm reading to read to you, or maybe I have some new teaching materials. Perhaps I can share with you in other video series. Alright? So, that's it. Alright, fathering journey doesn't stop here. We continue to be better father, continue to build a community of uh, daddies who want to give their best for their kids and for their family. And uh, remember to love our wife. Alright, so that's it. Thank you for watching this. I love you. God bless you. Goodbye.